Right. Um, good morning, everyone. Yeah, Roshali, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, morning, Ryan. So, yeah, you know, happy Friday. Thanks for joining the call. Uh, Shiva has not been, you know, it's got a personal extension. He won't be able to make it for the call uh, this uh, uh, this week. But uh, we have uh, Roshali, who's a head of uh, customer success, and uh, Ryan, who's a director of uh, consulting. Um, these two folks are going to take us through a very detailed walkthrough of the product. Um, and um, after that, if there are any questions, um, we'll attempt to answer whatever we can, but uh, we will, whatever we can't, we'll keep a note of that and we'll make sure that we get back to you on the next Wednesday call. We'll start with answering those questions so that all your, uh, any questions that people may have are taken care of. Uh, thank you very much as always. And, um, uh, you know, Ryan, Brushali, over to the both of you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I think what we will do is uh, there's a small presentation about V4 and we will also do a side-by-side -side demonstration uh, of the same capabilities of V4, right? So to uh, start with the presentation, we will go through certain screens. I will, I will just showcase. Okay, I'm sorry for this. Just give me a minute. I'm sorry. I think it's. Okay. I'll just reshare my screen. Uh, I hope my screen is visible now. All right, so to start with, um, this is the login screen and there are certain dashboards which are already there in V4. And I'm sure I think uh, everybody here is using V4 uh, parallelly to their V3 instances. So uh, just to you know brush up a little, uh, V4 has a very global centric uh, view as compared to in V3, uh, we had a very ASIC centric view, right? So here I think globally you are able to look at different risk scores or uh, different dashboards. So a lot of um, global centric view abilities have been added into V3, uh, sorry, V4. Now to start with login and dashboards, I think uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through certain slides and then I'll request Ryan to showcase those capabilities as a live demonstration. So parallelly, we are going to walk through the presentation and also show the live capabilities, right? So uh, he will take you through the dashboards then the overview of the company, right? So here we have the overview page wherein you are able to see the summary of that particular company, Company, like you're able to see total assets, what are the total vulnerabilities, uh, what are the uh, agent types, like, you know, how the agent type is uh, been uh, bifurcated for that particular company. Uh, next is about agents. So I think this is a new edition. Probably you must have already seen that, but agents page uh, at the global level has also been added wherein you are able to see the probes, lightweight agents all listed uh, per company wise. So you'll, here you'll see the company name and the company ID attached to it with all the agent description like we had, like, you know, what is the OS name, agent type, et cetera. Um, same way we have this. Uh, so this is a lightweight agent view specifically just to showcase that, uh, that this is the way, you know, the probe and the lightweight is the similar way we had in V3. So in V4 also we have probes and uh, agents in the different view. Right. And then Ryan will help us, uh, you know, on the agent install. So coming to this agent install, I think the main aim to showcase this is the web installer has been added for the uh, windows. Right. So right now, if you log in and if you check your screen, uh, you should be able to see the web installer capability right there uh, on the agent install screen for you. Right. Uh, over to you, Ryan. Uh, so I'll request Ryan to walk you through these capabilities uh, for overview agent uh, and the dashboard. Post then we will continue with the presentation going ahead. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for Charlie. Yeah. So I will get my screen share going here and we're going to, we're going to show you guys on screen and kind of walk through that UI together. So everyone can see it in action here. All right. So for Charlie, you'll have to make me host of the meeting uh, so I can share my screen. Now, please. Done that, Ryan. Please go ahead. All right. Thank you. 
Okay, so I'm going to bring my screen over here. Just bear with me while I get it resized for you guys. Hopefully everyone can see that screen okay. Yes, Ryan, we are. Okay, so when you first log in to the new portal, uh, portal.myconnectsecure.com, once you're in, you will land on the dashboard. So basically, I'm here at Overview Dashboard. This is kind of your landing page. From here, you're going to get a global view of, you know, vulnerability data broken out by severity, and you'll get your top CVEs by 10 uh, listed in the gauge here. In the top right, you'll have the ability to switch between the built-in dashboards. So everything that you're used to seeing in the overview of V3 is here. So everything's been ported over. You'll know which dashboard you're in, indicated by that checkbox. That'll let you know what dashboard you're in. You can just tap on the dashboard to change them. It will load up the data. And again, remember, we're looking at global. So it's looking at all your customer data all together in one and breaking it out. Each dashboard will also have sub pages in some cases. So this one's got a summary. It's also got the details of those vulnerabilities broken up by application and network. Since those are the two main types of vulnerabilities we scan for, right? Application and network. So bringing some clarity around what you're seeing here in the data. Again, come up to the top. You can scroll through the list to see all the different dashboards that are in. You tap on the one you want, it'll load it up. Now, what's also nice about the dashboard is when you're looking at this data, if you wanted to switch down to a single customer, you do have the ability to come into the, the switcher here and pick on a company, and that dashboard will update with the company data alone, so you're not looking at everything. And keep in mind, when you're in the company view, the dashboard will contain different dashboards. Just like in V3, you're at the global view, there's different dashboards, when you're at the company view, you'll have another unique set of dashboards for the company data. And again, you can switch between that data either by customer or back up at that global level and look at it all together. The other thing that I really like that we've done here is the filtering that we brought to the dashboard view. So on the left, when you're on your global view, you'll have the ability to look through the data and you can start picking off customers. So if you wanted to look at a group of your customers, instead of just maybe all or one, you can come in, select as many as you need, tap apply filters, and the dashboard is now looking at maybe just a group, maybe of your most critical customers, right? Um, however, you need to split this up. Now you have options to do any and all views that you need to look at the data here. So really nice, nicely thought out by the team, I, I thought bringing this filtering capabilities. If you want to go back, clear all, make sure you hit that apply and you'll get back to your data. You'll also notice when you're in these views, you'll notice that these tiles are lighting up, letting you know what you're filtering. So if you see the tiles, it's letting you know, hey, I'm, I'm editing the filter source. So that is your overview dashboard here. Again, switch between them in the top right, global versus companies. And then remember, some of these dashboards are going to have different pages beyond to give you some of the data that sits behind the dashboards. Okay. Uh, we're going to navigate over to the overview page as well, where Vishali talked about uh, the agents view. So the metric, I'm actually going to visit here since we're talking overview, we're going to visit the metrics page. This is one of the original V4 screens that some of you have may have seen several times when we have first showed the product off. So this was also included, again, looking at global data, giving you a quick recap, vulnerabilities by severity, risk score across your customers, how many assets you've got, how many companies, and then again down here, you've got some of that data you can drill through. Anything here is clickable. It'll take you down to that data so you can look at it. Okay. Then you've got your agents view. Again, we're in the global agents view. So I can see how many probe agents I've got across all my customers. So I'm looking at 17. We're always loading five per page. You can, of course, change those rows if you want to see more data on the page. If you like to see 10, you can also save those settings. So you can put these screens the way you want, pick off the column headers the way you want. Like personally for me, when I'm looking at these screens, 
OS name, OS platform, OS version, pretty similar. I'm a pretty simple guy, so I don't really need to see name or version. This tells me what I need to know, and I can keep that clean, and then I can save those settings. So next time I come back to the screen, it remembers how I like to look at things. So each user can customize those column headers the way they want, reorder them, et cetera. Again, looking at my probes, same deal, lightweight agents on this side, same concept, 31 total. I can see what customers are split across. I can search through them, filter them, et cetera. Now, if I wanna switch down to a customer view, again, I can come in here, hop into the customer view, and now I'm just looking at an individual customer's lightweights and probes. Okay, so nice and easy to switch between the screens on those filters without kind of having to reload the screen, which is nice. Uh, <clears throat> when you're in these screens, off to the far right, like we're used to in the current product, you've got the three-dot action menu. You're going to have additional commands here that you can issue to these probes to the lightweight agents. Things like mapping discovery and credentials, which is how you actually create a probe in the new product. And you've got a slew of other commands here. Now, we do have documentation written for all of these commands and, and all that you see on the screen. Uh, and I know this part's done because I wrote it myself. And we have been working diligently on the documentation to make sure everything you guys see here has you know clean and clear docs and, and uh, so everything that you're seeing here, again, I'm not going to go through every feature, but you guys can see most of it's self-explanatory there. And then, for Charlie, did we also get into the assets page on your slide deck? Should I just slide into the assets page as well? Uh, could you cover the navigation panel on the side for the global? Yes. Good point. So take us back to the home, what I'll call the home page, which is the global overview dashboard. When you're here, down the right-hand panel, when you're at the global view, you're going to have options like creating new companies. You can remove companies. Again, you tap here, you fill it out. It'll create a new company in the system. We've got the support for local, which is creating it right inside our tool, or you can use the PSA companies. If you're integrated with one of the supported PSAs, then you can import your companies rather than create them you know, manually. But if you decide to create them manually, you can later map them to those PSAs. So you always have an option to get to your companies. Uh, deleting companies is here. Pick the company you want, you tap delete. You'll have your integrations here. Again, feature parity with the integrations that exist today in V3. So everything that's there, plus some actually new ones are going to be introduced as you know V4 comes downstream. We've already actually got a couple of the new RMM tools in here, like Manage Engine and Super Ops were added into V4. So the integrations page, and it's the same concept. You tap the tile, you put your credentials in, you build it out. Again, documentation is built for all the integrations that are here that have guides about how to set these up, some best practices, et cetera. We've got our application baseline rules here at the global level. So you define your application baseline, and then those get applied down at the companies, and the results are shown at the company level. So again, we've got this in V3, application baseline, just in the new UI rewritten, everything there exists today. You add them, no different than how we do it today. You've got your main global settings that affect, you know, all companies in the system, starting with your time zone. You got your date formats, your session timeout settings, global port policies for port scans. So if you have insecure, denied, or excluded and allowed ports that you want to call out uh, from port scanning, you can do these here. You can also do this at the company level. You've got your deprecation days for agents and assets. You'll also find the suppressed vulnerability days for your patches here. So again, that's under your deprecation days. Your white label settings, again, the logos, the branding you see when you log into the tool. Our normal EDR and backup software exclusion and inclusion list. 
So this is where you, you know, you can tell the system what EDRs are recognized on the endpoint and valid EDR, or if they shouldn't be valid, you can include or exclude those. Same with backup. We'll continue to add to this, but if something's not in the list that you need to add, as always, you guys have the ability to add your own. Um, just have to identify what the backup software name is. Compliance scan options global. So this was something newly added um, to help with performance and to stop scanning for unnecessary compliance if you don't you know don't need to per se right because most of our partners that we're working with are not going to scan for every single one of these compliance frameworks right they might scan a couple of them or maybe one or two or three but most partners i see aren't doing all of them but if you are then use them all but if you're not this is designed to help the scan the compliance scan reduce the load that it's scanning by telling it, hey, I when I run a compliance scan in my system, I only care about maybe CIS and PCI and HIPAA controls. I don't want to see anything else. Maybe I'll add in CSF here as well. So when you save these, when you issue a compliance scan from the agent, it will only run compliance standard checks against those selected frameworks. Rather than scanning for all the controls and doing a whole bunch of unnecessary computing power and displaying a bunch of data that you're most likely not even looking at or reporting on, we save some of that, that load for you guys. So this should help again with overall performance of the scan agents themselves. And then lastly, the lightweight agent scan interval. So here you guys can configure how often that lightweight agent scan is gonna take place. So anywhere as frequent as 15 minutes with the max of two hours. And again, that way, if you're concerned or having performance issues or don't want to scan as, as aggressive, we've given you guys some flexibility to change that. And so again, that's our global settings menu. We've got our profile menu here, which is going to redirect you to your Zetadel front end. This front end is where you manage, you know, the authentication providers, identity providers, and the actual access into the actual application. So I know there's been some confusion around some of this. We've got documentation built now that talks about the ZDL front end, how to use the authentication and identity providers to set up things like SSO with, you know, Microsoft. Azure or SAML or Okta or any of those supported providers. There's a, there's a whole list of them. So we do have docs built for this stuff, which I'll show you guys today to make sure we know where it's at. But that's going to be your profile out at Zetadel. And then you'll have a user management that'll load inside of our application that shows the users inside the application's portal. Okay, so there's kind of two sides to users, right? There's the users that exist on the front end Zeta Dell console, and then there's the users that exist in the application side, which is what we're looking at here. And again, I can go in and add my users that I need to, just like you've always done in V3. You can put a user in here, you assign them their role. We've got, you know, the roles that you're used to seeing, plus some additional new ones that have been introduced. So again, this is where you'll manage your application local users. We've got our plans and billing section that will show you what your current plan is with, you know, with the product, show you your breakdown, how many devices you get, what the cost is, and then we'll give you your count of assets. And then we'll give you a breakout of those assets across your customers. So you can understand how your spend or your cost for this tool is accrued across your customers. So this may help you with pricing and packaging, you know, decisions you're making around your managed services or how you're charging for this, or maybe why you're not charging for it. Because we've seen a little bit of everything in between that. So plans and billing, your getting started area. This is similar to when you log into V3 today, you get that pop-up menu on the, on the side, on the right side of your screen. It gives you some of that tenant information. So what your tenant domain is, this is something that, you know, any of you that have worked with our support team, we will always ask you guys, hey, what's your tenant? What's your domain? 
this is what we're referring to. That way we know what, you know, how to, how to look you guys up and help you. But you'll get your tenant info here, a welcome message, and then, of course, links to all the documentation. And this will continue to get updated and enhanced. So as I mentioned, you know, myself, I've been working and rewriting all the V4 docs. So, you know, anything that's out there that you guys need, you should find. And if you don't find it, you let us know and we'll get it, we'll get it built for you. We've got our CVE master search. So if you're looking for a specific CVE, you drop it in there, it'll search our database for it. And it'll just, it'll, you know, just display any of the results you've got. And again, this is in D3 in the top right corner of your D3 platform. And then lastly, you've got your, uh, whoops, I actually signed myself out there. A sign out, of course. I get myself over here. So again, a big change in this UI is going to be training yourselves to look on the right side of the screen on this toolbar. Because a lot of the functions on each screen are always going to illuminate themselves on this right panel. So all the options that I just clicked through basically are up at that global level. And again, you'll notice if I go down to a company level, I'll use my demo company. As I go to the company, you'll notice this, these options change. So almost every screen you're in, you're going to want to keep your eyes off to the right to look at additional actions that you can do on that particular screen. Most of the time, you're going to find these things on the right. And again, these are going to be company-specific settings versus going up and global settings. Okay. All right. Uh, Brian, I think one more ability you can highlight here that on the right top corner, if they want to place the side navigation bar on the top, they want to play around with that arrangement, they have an ability to do so, right? On the rightmost yes. top. Yes. So great point. So in the new UI, in the very top right corner, you'll see the little cog wheel, which is spinning all the time. It's supposed to be spinning. Um, and so when you tap this, you'll get some options to change the overall layout of the screen. So things like the color, you know, you can switch the color of the buttons and the banners. So I'll just use the teal. This kind of looks like our teal anyway. And you can switch between dark and light theme. So those of you that like to use dark mode or light mode, you can switch between those. And then what Rashali was mentioning here is the layouts. So you'll notice here, there's some different layout options. So this bar up here, on the top of the screen, overview, assets, balls, compliance, et cetera, these are what are gonna change. So right now I'm using the modern. If I go over to thin, you'll notice now that bar has transitioned to the left side of the screen. So for those of you that are used to looking at all your options on the left side of Connect Secure, you can use this instead if you don't wanna use the top view, right? Where it removes the bar from up here. And if you've got a little here to hide that, you didn't want to see this, you can kind of hide yeah. it and really get a full screen effect if you were, you know, you're a simplistic like me. So again, top right, tap this, and there's a couple of different, you know, layouts. So again, here's a little bit different where it brings that bar more to the left side. You get this branding color at the top. So again, you guys can play around with what view makes the most sense for you, but may, uh, may lend itself useful if you find yourself wanting to look to that left bar again for things. I know change is hard, especially on these kind of applications. So yep. top it's right, mostly, yep. also you can, uh, these are a couple other UI changes. So again, you've got your localization options for, you know, for language. You can toggle full screen here. If you tap that, it'll bring you into a, a full screen mode. I'll hit escape to get out. You've also got the little moon. This will toggle you between dark and light mode very quickly on screen. So if you wanted to switch between them, you can always do that. And of course, your company switcher, which we've talked about. And then you've got your actual, uh, I call that your, you know, your avatar icon. Shows who you're signed in as. This will take you to your z profile. This will take you to our release notes in our documentation. This will give you build info and replication status. If you want to see where you're at with your uh, rep, you know, migration from V3. Now, this particular instance didn't actually get replicated from V3, so I don't have any data there. But if any partners that are logged in on your systems and you tap this, this will take you guys and show you 
your replication status, what has been replicated from your V3, V3 portal over to the new V4 side. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ryan, for uh, taking this quick view between the dashboard. Uh, if you allow me to share my screen again. Yes, I'm going to hand it back. So we're going to do a little hot potato here. Appreciate everyone being patient while we flip the screen share back for Shali. Should be all yours there, with Shali. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, so here I am again sharing my screen. All right, so now we are back uh, to the next view. So I think uh, Ryan covered pretty much on the overview on the dashboard. So I think the next uh, views, I think, which are very important and everybody is very curious to see this is the assets, right? So this is going to, so this view in V4 is going to list out all the assets. So right now I am into the company view here, if you see the screenshot. And this is how it will list out. And here also, it is very clearly in V4, it is shown that this is the company that you're looking at and you're into the asset section, right? So these assets, uh, we will also, uh, as Ryan will also take you through the detailing of asset in terms of windows. Uh, here, if you see the system information, we've got storage, network, problem, solution, uh, what are the ports, software, asset patches. So all these detailing, uh, we, uh, Ryan will showcase for Windows. We will cover Mac and we will also cover Linux for that, right? So these three um, asset detailing Ryan will cover. I think uh, Ryan, over to you because this will take little time into detailing. So you should be pretty good cover the uh, assets detail for that. Yes, uh, back to you, Ryan. Ryan, you might be on mute there. Yep, we can't hear you. There we go. Sorry about that. Yeah, thank you guys. Screen share okay? Yeah, yep, I'm all good. Couple up here. Okay, so our assets section, just so I don't throw myself off here, I'm gonna go back to the, my normal view. I use our default view called modern. This is what I'm used to looking at. Okay, so where we're gonna be at now is under the asset header. So under assets, You'll see we've got a whole slew of menu options here, which I'm going to take you guys through, and we're going to talk about each of these. So we'll start at the top. We're going to go into assets. So this is going to be the equivalent of what you have seen as active assets in the other uh, platform. So you'll get a view across, you know, what are the all the assets sitting out there that we found via probe discovery or obviously your probes and lightweight agents are all gonna show up as assets, okay? IPs, host names, companies, normal stuff we're used to seeing, giving you your risk score and your security grade, which I think that this is a nice touch. You can see this stuff without driving down into the assets. Uh, you got your importance. Again, you guys define importance of an asset, whether it's low, medium, critical, or high. And then you've got your vulnerability count. So this is basically saying total vulnerabilities, which is a sum of critical high, medium, and lows added up. Of those vulnerabilities, we've also got some classifications on the right that show you if they're CISA classified or if their EPSS is greater than 95%, so the exploit scoring. You've also got discovered and last scanned. Now, my screen is set up because I put these fields here. You go up into the top right to the column chooser. Got some other things like maybe agent type is useful, which lets me know if it's a probe or a lightweight. This can be pretty useful on the screen. Probably wouldn't want it smack in the middle of my stuff there. So again, you can rearrange it, put it where you want it. And again, there's some other uh, tags or other columns that you could display on that screen. And again, once you're done, make sure you tap save, right? Get it the way you want, tap save comes back or remembers your screen. I want to also remember to direct your eyes to the right, the toolbar. I always get so caught up in looking at all the new stuff here, I forget there's things here too, right? So on the right side, you're going to have options to do like, you know, adding an asset manually, removing an asset, deprecating an asset, running a scan on an asset. And again, you're basically going to use your checkboxes 
to select these things, and then you can go ahead and use those options on your right. So you can select one, many, or all, whatever you need, and then go from there. So again, on the right, you'll always have those options. So that's your assets view. Now, of course, looking at the assets, you tap on the names of them, IP or host, it'll take you down into the asset detail page, which gives you that more in-depth look about, about the asset. Host name, IP, MAC address, you know, who's last logged into this thing, your normal, you know, hardware, software specs, what operating system is it running, what version, that kind of thing. Below, you'll get your asset details broken up into these tabs, starting with problems. So problems are vulnerabilities. But what we've done, instead of just saying vulnerabilities and then dumping the this big list of CVEs to you with severity and then saying, you know, figure out what those are. The team has created these problem groups where we're trying to create these categories, more layman's terms that help everyone understand and learn what types of vulnerabilities are out there and how can we look at them through different lenses so that we can, you know, remediate them appropriately, you know, take priority on things that are priority, but also learn you know, what the difference is between a CVE that affects an application versus one that affects SMB on the network versus one that's affecting a certificate from an SSL, right? There's all these different tax surfaces of a vulnerability. And I think these problem groups are going to really start to help us understand how those are, are being impacted. So, you know, shout out to Shiva's team on doing this. I think like no one else is doing it because we've got all the CVE data, just like everyone else does. But I think this creates a whole new view of how we can look at these things and start to solve them, right? So your problems are your vulnerabilities with those groupings that are pre-set up and, and pre-configured for you. On the right side of, when you tap one of these areas, the right panel is gonna load the data. So if I wanna see my mediums, there's my mediums, there's my criticals, and, you get the CVE, the description. You'll also get a list of scoring here. And if you hover over these scores, we'll tell you what they are. You know, you've got your base score for that CVE. You've got your exploit score from EPSS, the exploitable score, the impact it has, the base, and again, the normal EPSS severity and how it's impacting the risk of this asset's risk score, got an E, and also how that risk score affects the company when we run an assessment or an executive summary and say, hey, you're a C or a D, this is contributing to that, right? So those are your problems. You also have a link to all the CVEs. If you tap that CVE, we'll drive you out to the National Vulnerability Database from NIST, where we source these from. So this is one of one of the many threat intelligence source feeds that we that we pull from, and you're always a click away from the real nitty gritty details if you want to get down into the articles. They're there. Moving on to these different areas here, I'm going to just kind of take you guys through the solution section. So solutions are what you would formally known as remediation plan. Solutions are, how do we fix the problems? That was the idea. Figured they go together. Problems, solutions. Very simple. Solutions are going to be things like a software patch, an update, or running a remediation script to fix something like SMB signing, right? That might just be a registry change or a policy change that we can run through a script. So some foreshadow, you know, some foreshadowing of what we intend to be able to do with the agents in terms of fixing things, applying patches or dropping scripts. So the problems, I'm sorry, the solutions are the fixes basically to your problems. And again, just like we've always done, we break it down by product. If there's an EPSS with it, we give it to you. Okay, you got, your, got your KB. Tap down to these again. We'll take you down to the latest install page, the KB article about what this is, or you know where the download is. 
And then to the how many vulnerabilities does that particular product carry with it? How many am I going to solve? And then the breakout by severity. You've also got a breakout of the companies this is affecting. And again, you can tap down to those ones. This will give you the companies and then the actual names of the assets. But you've got drill throughs on that. Again, that's going to be your solutions section. You've got your firewall rules. So again, it's reading the endpoint, the local firewall policies. You've got inbound and outbound rules. They'll all be displayed here. You're only always looking at five per page, of course. Remember, you can switch those you can save those if you want to see those next time at 10 per page. Like how they, you know, I think the UI is getting really nice in the fact that the lines are getting closer and I'm able to get more on the screen. I think that's really helpful. So another nice touch. But again, firewall, you've got your internal ports. Again, what ports are communicating, what protocols are running on those ports, what addresses, what paths, et cetera, do we see? So again, then you can drill down to the port you know, detail to see, well, what is port 135 if you're not really sure? So we give you a link out to speed guide to help, you know, some of our, you know, some of our partners and technicians are new to vulnerability management and they're new to this. And so this is a nice way to link them to some things to learn about, you know, specific ports if they're not familiar with everything they're seeing. You've got your external ports as well. So, right, internal versus external, same concept. Software, of course, uh, what's running on the machine. So in this particular endpoint, 206 installed softwares. And now we're giving you vulnerability data with the software install, which again, really nice touch by Shiva's team. Instead of just saying, hey, here's the software installed, like every tool does, now we're showing you the vulnerability data with the software in the same view, which you know, I think is an incredibly simple but very effective nice touch when I'm looking at stuff here. You've got your asset patches, you know, so what patches are installed on the machine. And again, taking it to the next level, not just the KB, everyone, everyone gives you the KB, but what is the description of that patch? When was it installed? Who installed it? How did it get installed? So some more intelligence around looking at asset patches. You've got your asset tags. We've always had tags. They've just kind of had a new facelift. They look a little bit different. Same concept. You can add tags to you know any asset. You can create your own tags. You can also, we kind of reworked tags. Um, we've got some logic with them where they've kind of got like some workflow automation where you can build conditions to have things be tagged, call those auto tags. And then of course you've got your manual tags, things that you just stick in there yourself. And then lastly, ciphers, certificates, um, encryption status that is running on ports and you know what the grade of those are. Again, going beyond just showing you a cipher, but giving you vulnerability data and scoring with it and the information that you want on the cipher side. That's gonna be all your asset details up on your top bar. And then you scroll down a little bit beneath that. Again, in our V3 product, it, we've got that similar kind of breakout. On the bottom section, you'll get some additional data about this machine, what programs extensions are installed, services running on the machine, of course, and the current state of those services. You got your user shares and what access they have, who has them. Always really useful, helpful for us too when we're troubleshooting and maybe trying to determine why an agent may not be showing up somewhere from a scan or populating Active Directory data. A lot of times we can come in here now and say, do we see the odd admin dollar share? That's usually a really good indicator that SMB is not enabled or not working. If we can see this, then most of the times our agents can't see it either. So nice way to look at user shares, local user accounts on the machine. So who's got user accounts? What groups are they a part of? Have they logged in, et cetera? You've got your report card, security report card, which we're used to seeing today in the new product. It's just kind of been moved down a bit. 
and we've introduced some heavily sought after suppression options for everything. We've had, you know, so many partners give us feedback about how to strengthen the way they look at their security report cards instead of us just dumping it out and saying, here's your grade. We're the school teacher. We make the, you know, we make the benchmark. You guys now have the ability to come in and suppress anything that we're counting in these report cards yourself. So if you're like, hey, I don't, I don't want to, you know, get scored on this, you'll be able to suppress this globally, company, or asset. So any and all options are available to you guys to customize these cards the way you want them based on the company, based on the asset, or based on the entire system. Shout out to the Chivas team again. This was a huge change, I which is yeah. going to be incredibly useful for everybody. Uh, your compliance report card, same exact concept there. We've, we've done this in our previous version. We're checking some of those known, you know, best practices around machine configurations and scoring them, but also giving me the ability to suppress them. Last but not least, you're on quoted service paths. Okay. So checking the machines, anything but the unquoted service path gets displayed. And there are a ton of articles on the web on how to address those uh, issues, you know, through scripting or through an RMM tool. There's a lot of ways to take care of those things. That's going to be your agent details when you tap into the agent. Again, I'm over here on my left. You'll notice like if I want to switch between, again, I can just tap on the IP. It'll switch this data right on the screen for me. But if I wanted to kind of inspect a couple of these, this looks like a you know a VMware machine here. Let's see different machines, whatever it happens to be, I can kind of look through and what I'm what I'm determining here. So one click away from swapping the screen out. Top right corner, take you back to the table. That's going to be your agent asset overview. And again, remember on the right hand side, you guys have those options to interact with these agents. So just keep that in mind. So that's your assets overview. Uh, can right. we go to one of the Linux uh, machine here, a Mac and a Linux? Uh, quickly, uh, because, yeah. uh, you know, showcase the asset details for those two platforms as well. Thank you. Yeah, good, great point, Vishali. I always forget that <laughs> no window where Microsoft Windows biased in a lot of cases, but no. <laughs> um, we, we do also read Mac and Linux now in the new version, the same way we read a Windows machine. So here is a Mac, where we're seeing a MacBook Pro 10. And again, I'm getting that machine info about the machine. Down below, same concept. Problems look like problems. We're identifying, you know, with the new agent, you know, we are we are scanning deeper and richer. So, you know, in a side by side with the previous product and our new product, you know, we would expect the new product to show, you know, newer things. Some things maybe that the V3 wasn't, because uh, it is scanning deeper and richer across different OS types now. But it is the same concept, right? You'll have your solutions, what needs to be fixed, your firewall, outbound, inbound, ports, installed software, where it's installed, vulnerability data with it, asset patches, tag ciphers, it's all the same. It doesn't matter if it's a Windows, Mac, or Linux, whatever applies to that particular machine, it'll have it. I don't know that I actually went through that other one now. I do have another Linux machine here as well. I believe my God. Didn't we have a Linux machine we deployed to, uh, Vershali? Uh Yes, we do have. You can search for the um, 10.0.3.233. Yeah, 233, that's it. I also want to show a Cisco device. Okay, Correct. so this is this is a Cisco device. It's not a, you know, it's not a traditional machine, but again, we're still able to read the machine, know what's on the network, what I, what it's running, what OS it's running, and we're still giving you the vulnerability scans of it again. So we're not just saying, oh, here's a device and its IP address. Now we're actually able to, no matter what the device is, get down to the nitty gritty and still scan it and present that data to you guys. So it's not just an asset sitting there with an IP address. 
So whether it's a Linux, uh, a Mac, or a Windows machine, you're going to have that ability to look down to that data. Uh, Vrishali, anything else on assets that I might have glanced over? I know there's a lot, lot to do here. Uh, probably the assets view we could cover, the top assets. I think it's, again, the similar things, but uh, they can see into the different groups, like problems, solutions across uh, all the assets. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I was going to go through the rest of those menus. So, again, I'm, I was in the assets. Now I'm going to drop down to problems. And I had a couple of questions I had, you know, previously. I want to just talk about this, the breadcrumbs, right? We're in demo company, right? Assets means I'm at the second bar or the second level is the bar up here that I'm in. The third is the actual menu that I'm in. So as I go to problems, you'll see I'm still in assets, but I'm in the problems menu now. So that's kind of how you know where you're at. So as I talked about the problem groups earlier, this is a view of the problems across all the machines for that company now. So earlier, I was just looking at one individual asset at the agent level. This is the view across the entire company. And again, I'm in demo company, and I'm looking at all problems grouped by those problem groups. And again, you tap the group, it loads the data. You can tap any one of these to get down to that data. Change your rules per page if you want to see more. Depends on what you like to see. Again, I'm at the uh, company level. I can go up to global, same screen, don't have to change, load, reload. Now what it does is it adds this new column here. So when I'm at the global view of problems, I can see how many companies are affected by that problem. I'll also get that count over here to the right where you can see your company counts. If you tap the number seven, this will drive me down to the companies and then the assets. So again, I could drill down here to go down to that asset. If I want to you know, get all the way down to the data, down to that machine, takes me back right to that machine, right to my medium problems filtered. Okay, go back out of here, back to the table. So again, nice switch between global or as I go down to the demo company, you're going to notice this center column is going to drop because there's no more company count. Now it's just my asset count. So that's the toggle between the two. Nice and simple to, to switch between those. So again, you can look at problems across one of your customers, or you can look at it across your entire portfolio, right? How much risk are you carrying? How many vulnerabilities are you carrying for all of your customers? That's a nice way to look at the split between the two. <clears throat> solutions. So again, remediation plan. That's what we think when we hear solutions. Now I'm looking at it for just the demo company. So again, these are all solutions for the single customer. I can switch back to the global view if I wanted to see it for everybody. Same concept, right? All or one. There's my global view. And then what you get is on the right, your companies and assets columns come in when you're on the global side. And again, you can drill down to these to get down to that data. As I look at my solutions, we've also added up here a velocity plan. So this shows us the interval on, you know, on how long are these things sitting vulnerable in these environments. So we've given you a range zero to seven day, eight to 15, 16 to 30, and then anything greater than 30 days. So how long has something been pending remediation in your environment? There's a nice understanding of you know, how quickly or not quickly are you getting to things? So this is broken out by company right here. These are going to be all your customers listed with those counts. Below that table, we'll break it out by application. 
so you can understand what customer and then what applications does that look like? So you can slice and dice it however you want. On the very far right table, again, don't forget that right toolbar, every screen, it has some options that are maybe different. This one contains the remediated records page. So anything that's been fixed will show up here. What has actually been remediated? Not pending, but it's been fixed. In the previous version, that's a toggle in the top right. It says pending and it says remediated. There's a switch. This is basically now that switch. Again, assets, solutions are the remediation plan. Going to move into OS patches, pending OS patches. So this is going to show you any assets that are missing operating system patches. Nice new view added into this portal. And it also covers Mac and Windows patching. So it's not just Windows. You're managing Macs. We can also determine if they're running the latest version. And that goes all the way up to 14. Mac OS, you know, Mac 14 all the way up from, I think, 10 is the... Yeah, 10 is the, the, the bottom of that ladder. So again, pending OS patches. How many assets? How many companies? I am looking globally here. I can, as all, at, just like in every other screen, I can go down to a single company and just look at a one customer. When I'm in the customer, you'll notice there is the number of days minimum and maximum, again, for filtering options. If you didn't want to see things, that had been released within the last 60 days, 30 days, 15 days, because maybe your patching policies are not aggressive and you're not patching in you know real time or zero day, we'll call it. You may be waiting a week or 10 days or 15 days to actually install those patches. That'll help curb some of the, what you're seeing. And then of course, we've got the links to the patches. So in the KB, you can click here. This will drive you out and show you, hey, in this, how to fix the unquoted service path for that particular one. Uh, this one, install the latest Apple update. We'll take you to the Apple release you know, page to show you, hey, here's, here's when it was released. So again, you've always got links to things. So that's your pending OS patches. We've got a port view. Again, this will just give you a quick view across ports that are in the environment, what's open, what's communicating. Now, in the columns user, you can see a list of you know, what I'll call the top 20 protocols and ports that we see running in mostly every environment. Um, everything else would be fallen under other asset ports, right? We're not going to put 65,000 checkboxes on the screen. You could imagine how that might look. So we've called out what we find to be some of the industry standard protocols and the ports they're running over. And we'll give you the count of the assets we see with those ports enabled. So if you're like, hey, I got these RDP ports open. I'm going to see what those are. Okay, so that's your ports view. That is also, of course, available down at the machine level like we showed you earlier. Your external assets. These are going to be your external scan side. So in just like in the current version, we've given you guys the scanning profile quick, detailed, and deep. Top 1,000, top 3,500, or 65, all the ports, 65,535. Below, you will see any custom scan profiles that you've built. Some of our partners have asked for specific, you know, scanning parameters because they only want to scan a you know, certain set of ports to speed things up. You can still build those in our, in our tool. Remember off to your right, you've got your toolbar. So this is where I can add a profile edit or remove if I had any down here. I'm gonna go ahead and add one. Let's call this Ryan's sample scan profile. We've got our port types. You can either do top or custom. If you choose top, we'll give you a subset, top one, 500,000, 3,500. So you can choose one of those. Or if you wanna go custom, you can specify what ports you wanna scan. Comma separated, so maybe 80, 80, 80. 
can also do a range of ports. Maybe I want to scan, you know, 5,000 through 10,000. So you can build the port scan however you need, comma separated. Choose the protocol for the scan, send or connect. If you want to do brute force detection, you can check the box or not check the box. And you save that scanning profile. It doesn't like my port selection up there, apparently. Oh, I see. I wrote 50,000 to 10,000. I guess it was backwards. Invalid port. Let me try that again. There we go. Apparently, I can't type. So once you add that profile in, it'll drop into this window. And then that can be used when you initiate an external scan. You can tell it to use that particular profile name versus the deep detailed or deep, or I'm sorry, quick detail or deep. As I mentioned, if you wanted to edit this, you select it, you come over to your bar, you edit. Or if you didn't like it, you can remove it. And that'll clean it off the screen. So that's your scanning profiles. You've got your deprecated assets. I won't spend much time here. Anything that becomes deprecated will show up here. Yeah. Two ways that happens. Automatically, when a machine or asset is sitting idle for 30, 60, 90 days, it becomes deprecated. Or at any moment in time, you can go to a machine and mark it as deprecated manually. They'll show up here. You'll have a list of those. You've got your application baseline results. These are going to be the results of the application baseline scan. So again, we'll show you if it was a service or a software, mandatory or denied, what the product was, what type it was, what OS, et cetera, give you the counts. And then I like this touch here. Is it global or not? So this gives you guys a quick understanding of when you're looking at the results, are these global things? Yes or no. And if something doesn't look right, you can obviously go in and to the company level and adjust those baseline rules. Nice, nice touch there on the UI. Got your attack surface mapper, similar to that external scan. This one goes, goes a, a bit more um, behind it. You'll have your, you know, don't, you know, you can add in your profile. So again, eyes to the very far right. This is how you initiate a pro, add something in. And put in the name, tap save, and that lets me do it. And if I'm, well, maybe I didn't like that. Uh, let me try that again. I always find a way to break the UI when I type strange entries. Let's try that. I won't worry about that now. But this is where you would add in domains to scan. Also select, edit them, or remove them, or run the scan right now on them. Scan results will populate on your job section. This will actually show you attack surface mapper jobs that have ran or are in progress running at the moment. So depending on what you kick off, and then of course you can tap down to that uh, that date range, and that'll give you your your actual scan results at the customer level as well. Remember, I'm in global. So you can always go down to a customer to get to the meat of that of that particular customer if you didn't want to do it globally. You've got certificates, so your SSL certificates. Probe scan would need to be in an environment to get this data back. And it will go out, look for any SSL certificates, bring that information in, and it'll give you, you know, some of that critical data that you need about the SSL specifically, is it self-signed and is it expiring? Um, those are usually things that we want to we want to learn about, but you can, you can see here what's going on. And globally, I could go down to you know a particular customer if I didn't want to look at everything. Yeah, I got 154 of them here. Remember, we're only usually showing five per page by default. So you can always ex extend those out further if you need to look at more data. And in the top right, you can always download these panels just like in V3, using those download arrows. And that'll bring this data out to an Excel file if you need to hand this over to 
maybe your engineering team or maybe a customer requested something from you, you could always, you know, export that to them. That's your certificates. And then last but not least is the scheduler, right? So the scheduler is where you guys can configure your scan schedules to take place. Now, if you remember earlier, the lightweight agents do not need a schedule, so they will not be in the scheduler. Lightweight agents are going to be scanning all the time. And at the interval, you set them on the settings page. This is going to be for full scans, active directory scans, and network scans. Um, I'm certain the team is going to be adding some additional scan types like your attack surface mapper, your externals. Um, I know some of those are being still still being worked through, but this is where you'd basically come in, add the schedule, you know, daily AD scan, tell it what scan you want to do. You pick what companies should use this. So allowed, and then again, as, as we've always given you is an all companies option, which includes everyone and anyone newly added, or you can come down and pick particular customers if you only wanted to scan, you know, so many of these. If you want to include or exclude tags from the scans, you can, like you always can, like you always have been able to. And then your scheduler options, just like you're used to seeing them. Every day, hourly, weekly, how often do I want to scan? Maybe first week, I'm only going to do this on Sundays. Set your time, does it end? Can turn it on or off here. So if you just want to stage one without turning it on, it'll show you here it's not active. And again, if you wanted to go in and edit, you're going to select that record, use your edit, come in, you can turn it on. You can also remove your schedulers from here as well. So anything that's in the system, you can select and remove. So that's how you had to get rid of those schedules. Now, I want to point something out. I'm going to make sure I'm correct before I say it. The scheduler is available at the company and global level, just like it's always been. So if you're going to use the scheduler, just I would recommend when you name things, when you give it a name, tell us if it's global, tell us if it's company specific in the name. That way, it's there's no confusion for you guys on the scheduler side. Okay, so that covers our our assets section. 